I'm sorry. This is Brian. Excuse me one second. If I don't answer, he'll kill me. Yeah, I'm about to shoot this shit for Vice real quick, and then I'll, I'll meet up. All right. I got a big family, man. I have an older brother, I have two older sisters, and I have two younger brothers, so that's a lot of us. <laughs> my dad, he had his own construction business. I work with my dad a lot. That, that was one of the main reasons why I, I think I became so successful in, in basketball, because if I had to do his job, I don't know, I'd probably be homeless. That, that, that's a tough living right there. My first couple of years in New Orleans was great. 18 years old. At this point in time, you're a high school kid. You listen to Lil Wayne. You, you, you know, you watch Baron Davis, and then you just go from listening to him or watching him to being right next to him and being with him. It was a shock for me. When I got my first tat, I was 16. How'd your mom react? She took me to go get it. It was a picture of me dunking. Well, it was a picture of Vince Carter dunking, and I just changed the number and put my name on the back. I always was one of the kids who was like, man, that looks ridiculous. Look at this guy with all these tattoos and da 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 da. And then before you know it, I just became that person. How'd you decide, like, with Lockett, you're just like, I'm, I'm gonna go to China? I wanted to play, but they offered me a shitload of money for four months. So I was like, y'all gonna lock us out. I'm gonna just go make this extra cash and then come back when it's gravy again. There are huge tea drinkers over there. And this hot water theme, I don't know what it's about. Like, they literally boil hot water and just drink it hot. Like, no, nothing else added into it. It's weird at first, but once you do it, it's like, it helps your body, actually. Every person that plays in the NBA should experience playing in New York at least once in your career. To play at the Mecca of basketball at the Garden every night is probably the, uh, the greatest decision I've ever made to go to New York. Melo's probably my all-time favorite person that I've been around consistently over a course of X amount of years. The trade from New York to Cleveland, I was pissed, honestly. First of all, we're, it's not my fault we're in this situation. <laughs> we were in the locker room. We were about to play at Memphis. I just got off the court warming up. The GM was on the phone. Yeah, we just traded you to Cleveland. Da, 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 da. I'm like, why? Are you serious? I told Sean, I'm like, hey, kid, we out of here. He's like, what? We just came off of a 50-plus win year. We were second in the East. We had an unbelievable team, unbelievable chemistry, and then they break everything down to rebuild what? Like, but more than anything, I was I was pissed because I couldn't play with, with my best friend anymore. I mean, LeBron and Melo have a lot of similarities, a lot. I feel extremely fortunate to be able to play with two of the greatest players to ever play the game. Melo's a pure scorer. Scores like somebody breathes. But LeBron, is he does everything. Rebounds, passes, scores, defends. He does it all. In my eyes, I think we're going to win the championship. We just have to get everybody on the same accord. Or we don't work as hard as we should to make it happen. So it's, it's the difference in believing it and working and striving to get it. I believe I'm the difference as far as a teammate, not so much whether I hit threes or defend, whether it's playing 40 minutes and not scoring or playing 40 minutes and scoring all the points. I just want to win.